Welcome back, my friends. This is John, as known as by John. Um, welcome back to another flight tying tutorial here in the AREX headquarters. Um, today we're going to tie uh, one of my favorite patterns for bass is the flatwing baitfish pattern. And the materials we'll be using is very simple materials, so I like using natural materials. So we're going to have some white bucktails, chartreuse bucktail. I like time flies with fox. These are marble fox. They're a bit longer than the normal fox. And they're perfect for the baitfish pattern. We need chartreuse, some olive, and some white. And then, of course, the main ingredient is the flat wings. For the flat wings is these saddle hackles from Ewing. So, <clears throat> without further ado, let's get started. <clears throat> Sorry. I need a bit of coffee first, and let's get started. Let's launch it. Hooking device we're gonna have is the light stinger hook. I like this as it gives a lot of movement in the water, and I like fishing with like intermediate lines. And these bait, bait fish patterns, I normally fish them just a few, one or two hours below um, before. Um, low water, so we don't really need to go that deep with them. So I like the light stinger hook. This is the size 4 and is the NS 122 from Arix. So let's get started with the hook and device. And enjoy the video, guys. As you, when I start, I like starting my thread a bit more behind from the hook as that will give me a mark where I'm going to tie my last, um, my last wing. So I always kind of like marking my, where I start with my thread to always have my consistency with my flies and they all finish always the same, the same place. So we can start, you know. First, we're gonna have some white bucktail. So you can see these are nice and soft bucktails. I like these soft bucktails as it's easier to work with and it gives a lot of movement. And because I like using the hair straightener as well for them, and that will get them nice and straight and they will actually feel like craft fur, but they're actually bucktail, so they won't fall um, when fishing. So make sure you always clean up the small pieces of bucktail. Get rid of everything that you don't want in it. And as you can see, I only use a small bit of bottle so it's not too bulky. Wet your fingers a bit. And like you see, I like using a small hair straightener. And they get nice and straight and, and these are the soft bottles. So you have nice movements. A few more fibers are coming up. You can always shake it like this and as you sometimes you can get them with your hands. So just give them a shake and it'd be good. Shake it, don't stir it. So there you go. This would be a good length, like one or oh, two times the hook size. That's a perfect um, length there as there'll be a white hackle over it. So that's to hold the hackle in place, not to wrap around the hook when you cast it. So a few soft turns there to have it in place. Once you're happy, spin your bobbin, get that line tight then, and then a few turns. Okay, as you all know, some of you know, I like twisting my bucktail to have a nice cut and you won't have that bulk in it, so you have a nice cut there then, and just tidy up a small bit. Take your time and get it nice in place. Next, I'm going to use 
some of these floral fibers. I really like this material. It's not too thick or nothing and it's, it's very nice in the water with the movement and everything. And your fly won't be too bulky either. And the fluorescent of these fibers is amazing in the sun. You don't need too much, as you can see, there's probably about 10 strands there. I go to the middle of my hook, so I can work my way back then. So you put it on top. One turn, use your thumb, and once you're happy, just turn this back. And there you have it. Hold it with your thumb and just work your way back. Just make sure when you're working your way back, you're not squeezing the bucktail too much at the back. Just have soft turn so the bucktail is not gonna open up on you. So it stays nice like this. Okay. Next, we're gonna put a white saddle hat. Pick a nice piece there. You can use the capes as well from Ewing. They also work very well. But I really like these um, saddle hackles as look at the very soft. So imagine the movement in the water on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this a small bit longer than the bucktail. About there. So it has a nice tail then and nice movement then. So what you do, you clean up a small bit. Check where you happen with it. And then you're gonna leave some fibers tie over so it holds the thread for you. So it won't turn or anything like that or come loose. I like wetting my fingers a bit to have the fiber sitting nicely, okay? So now what we're going to do is you're going to hold it with your thumb and have a few soft wraps, not too tight. And then with this, that's why I left the stem so I can pull at it a small bit. And now it's going to sit perfect so you can adjust it how you like it. So now you have the fibers, the feather sitting nicely there. Once you're happy with it, then you have, you go forward with some harder um, wraps there and then fold it back to lock it in place there. It won't come off anymore. Okay, just walk the way back there. And that's it and perfect there. I like adding a small drop of UV. Not too much because you don't want it too, too much on it. Small drop to hold it in place there so it won't pull on you or anything like that. And there you have it. Once you're happy with that, just work your way back a small bit there. And next, I'm gonna use, I really like these Lagertons. They're UV, this one is UV chartreuse. And I really like them and they're so strong and they're really nice material to work with. I just got a small piece there. You don't need too much. <clears throat> what I do is I just small, I cut the tip is small in kind of a triangle so it sits so it sits um, good. And then on your side, you just tie it in it. Work your way back a small bit. And work your way to the front. Nice and gently. So as you can see, I went nearly by the half of the rock a bit further than the half because that's where I want my next um, hackle to go. So now, small bit of glue, 
before putting the flat braid. Just for a bit of extra secure security there, you know, and support. And the way I do this is I turn it towards me to go be like a triangle, so you can see. And then I turn towards me instead of away from me, I turn towards me so I can keep track of where I'm turning and so I don't miss any any spots on it. And you just overlap and turn like that. If you have a rotating files, you can rotate them as well as like this. It makes life easy too, but for the Flight time video, I want to do it this way in case there's anyone that doesn't have a rotating vice and they can see how to do it this way. Okay, two turns in the back, two turns in the front, and then you have it locked in place. It's called the axis away. <laughs> then just two turns to the back again just to lock it. Perfect. Next, we're gonna have some chartreuse bottle. These are from Flyco, and the nice quality bottles. I really like them. So, just cut a small bit. You don't need too much. It's just to sit again to sit the flat wing over it. So you don't need too much of a bulk on it. Again, clean up. By giving a shake and then line them up a small bit to the way you like it. If there's some that are too long, you can pull them out, or like I do, I like lining them because I already took the right amount that I'm gonna use, so I don't really want to throw more away except the small ones. So I line them up a small bit with my fingers. Once I'm happy, I wet it a small bit. Now run it through the hair straight in there and they come out nice and straight and they sit nicely on the on the hook ship. Cool. <clears throat> Same way we did with the white one. I'm gonna put it there a small bit shorter than the white this time to have that nice taper. Um, of the fly. Okay, you hold it with your thumb, lock in place, and then put it right between your fingers to lock it there. Use soft wraps to the front, as you can see. Once you're happy, press it down. Have a quick look, take your time. If you're happy with it. You hold it in place again. I like spinning my bobbin then, and that will make the line, the, the thread um thinner then to kind of just so i don't have much bulk so then one turn and lock it and then you don't need too much one two three okay then again like i like taking my bottle again twist them as much as i can once i'm happy with it Use a nice pointy scissor, and there you go. That's a nice clean cut, and you don't have much bulk. Okay, so just tidy up a small bit. Front one, two, three. Work your way back. One, two, there. As I'm gonna tie now the. Right, before I put the flat wing, I wanna put one more white bobtail underneath to continue the the taper of the fly. Again, small bit. You don't need too much, just a small bit of bottle. Half a pencil will be more than enough. Or even less. Like, I like my flies very sparse, so I don't use much material. As the flat wings will have a lot of movement in it anyway. So there you go, again.
and take your time preparing your materials. You'll be more happy after once your fly is finished. There you go. Return. And this one I wanted a bit shorter than the one that I used for the tail. Okay, go ahead with your thumb. Pinch loop there. Two soft wraps. Use your thumb then to fix your fibers. If you have a dobbing needle then just use it like that and split your fibers in half there like that. So they're even on each side. Once you're happy, make sure you always hold it tight like that and press it down. Spin your bobbin. And again, three wraps. One, two, three secure wraps. So you can see there's not much bulk then. And then go to the back again, as I'm gonna put my flat wing in. Now we're gonna have the chartreuse, grizzly chartreuse one. This one from Ewan Hackle as well. Nice and soft. Pick up, pick one five, one feather here. Let's have one that's nice and long here. This one. Okay. So this one I wanted a small bit shorter than the white hackle. So I think that about there would be perfect. Clean up the stem a bit. Yeah, and as you can see, it's it's opened a bit. So I like wetting my fingers a small bit and put them together a bit. So at least now I can tie them together there on the hackle there. So soft wrap again, hold it in place, two soft wraps, and now you pull it, and you can use your thumb then, you sit the feather nicely, so once you're happy with it, you hold it tight and now you lock it to the front, not to the back, otherwise you're going to spin your feather again. So to the front. See it's sitting nicely now there. Take the stem, turn it over and have one, two, three wraps. And that won't go anywhere. Okay, again, I'm gonna use. I'm gonna put my feather, small, uh, my thread a small bit to the back there, as I'm gonna put some dobbing. But before I put the dobbing, I want to add a small bit of UV again to lock it. No, that's secure, it won't go anywhere. Perfect. So far so happy, check your fly. Everything is in place. Beautiful. Next, a small bit of dog. You don't need too much dog. I like using the, the same you know, laser dog. And this one is the UV orange, as you can see. And it's, it's nice in the water. I just like mixing my colors a bit. Like I like, always if I'm using such chartreuse, I like using orange with it. it. It gives a nice contrast. If I'm using the gray grizzlies, I like using red then, or even yellow. So it's all how you pref your own preferences. I think orange looks nice with the chartreuse. I'm sure the fish will make, for them, it will make a difference to them, but many times the flies catches the fisherman's eyes first before they catch the fish. <laughs> right, so that's that. So now we're gonna move to some 
marble fox. This one is chartreuse. You don't need much of it. So just take a small bit. About that much will be fine. Okay. Just use a dubbing needle to clean the under for a bit. You don't need to take it all off because you want something to kind of hold as well a bit. Okay. Let it small bit. Then we'll use the hair straighten and straighten the small. Okay. Now we're gonna sit over here. So I want my first Overing to be a small bit behind. Exactly, if you look at the chartreuse bucktail, it's around that that same kind of um, measurement. So I kind of to give it that nice taper look. So I want to go over that bucktail, that chartreuse bucktail. So I'm gonna tie it the same length as that one. So spin your bobbin, the your bobbin, um, a moment. There you go. One, two, three to the front. It's very nice. Body access. And then lock it. That's it. Okay. As you can see, my thread is a small bit further though. I'm not going to tie the next one. Very, the same, very close to the top in there. No, I'm gonna have it a bit more to the front because I'm gonna use the white, um, I'm gonna use some white marble underneath it before I tie the last wing on top. I find if you tie the top wing before you tie it underneath, you're gonna have like a big gap on top and I don't like that. So I like to have my underwing done first, the belly done and then have my overwing finished nice with um with the white one we pick up a, a long piece I like tying with um, with the fox, but if you don't have the white marble, sometimes I like I just use white buffer underneath. Makes no difference really when it's underneath. It's the ones on top, the wing on top. I like using the natural material so it it, fall, it doesn't fall on you. But if you have it underneath, the using white buffer would be it's completely fine. Okay. It's more good. Just take your time. Clean your material, prepare them. And that one I want is a small bit shorter than the one, than the box, the white box that I put last. Spin your bottom. So you have that nice fit here. Mm -hmm. 
you should come to setting in place quick look once you're happy with it hold it tight now pull and lock and what i do now since this is the last one i like spinning it a bit and then lock in the front as well so go a few turns in the front that will lock that material in place so it won't go anywhere You see, when you don't use much material, then that UV orange will come through the white there nicely then. So from underneath it will look like gills when the fish is looking up. Right, before we finish up with the last wing, I want to add a small bit again of the floral fiber. You don't need too much. So I don't want to taper it a small bit. And just sit it on top like that. Then as last, we're going to use some olive marble fox. These ones are very thick, so you see you get a lot of material in a packet. These are the Flyco marble fox, and it's great quality. You see how soft it is and nice. So just take a small bit, you don't need too much, you don't want to overdo it, small bit will do. Take a small bit of the under fur. Use your Dublin needle, the Dublin brush. Wet your fingers. You can see I like to straighten them a small bit. With fox, if you wet your fingers, a friend of mine taught me that. You wet your fingers, you have it closes it up a bit nicer, and you have more. You can work with it better when you tie it. So now this is going to be a bit shorter than the chartreuse. You want to sit there to have a nice taper. Spinny bobbin. You have a nice thin thread here. Give it one. Two soft wraps. Use your thumb to spread out a small bit. Have a quick look. See what you think. I think that looks beautiful there. So now I'm going to lock it. Pull it down. A few hard turns. And then bring it to the to the back of the material and go underneath it. One, two, three. Give it a quick twist there. And you have that nice cut there. Okay. Since we have chartreuse in it, I'm gonna use just a pro marker. And just I don't like I don't like um, putting the thread and then coloring it. I like coloring my thread first like this, and then doing the whip finish. I see a lot of times people. They like to whip finish and then color it, but I think this way you won't miss any spots or anything, and it'll be a nicer, cleaner finish as well. Then we put a small bit of glue.
this one with a glue in your thread. This is the fly finish from Flyco. It gets very hard and it's, it really secures it. But it gives you time to whip finish. If you, I find if I use super glue on my thread, by the second turn, I can't pull the thread through. So I like using this one. See, you can pull the thread nicely and through. If you use super glue on your thread while doing the whip finishing, no, it's not going to work. And your whip finish is going to be full of glue as well after. So one, two, three. As you can see, I had this flat, so it gives a nice, it gives a nice finish there. You see, there's a nice head on it there, and that's perfect. Right. You can see, it's beautiful. What I like doing sometimes, is I use my lighter and because Fox will have a small bit of hair sticking out and you don't want that going in your UV. So I normally just give it a small bit of, you don't need to burn your fly, just like that. And I like heating up my finger and pull everything back and that makes it sit nicely as you can see, look. Perfect. Now let's put the eyes and finish the fly. Fly tire makes you thirsty. So for this one, I'm going to use the fly called flat eyes. I like using flat eyes on my flat wings. These are the four mil um, flat eyes, and these are called the uh, hollow yellow with chartreuse in it. So. Right. You can use glue or you can use UV. The rates of UV is perfect anyway for it. So just put a small drop of UV. Don't need too much. Think what your plan is. just in front of that orange dot and as you can see it's right behind the eyes and it'll look nice there. Let me just give it a zap thing to stick on. And that one over. As you can see the laggard looks nice through it, nice fluorescent. I'm sure the fish will see that miles away. Thank you, Pat. Check that your eyes are sitting even. A quick look at the front, and you can see it's in some place. Yep. And we give it a zap as well. Perfect.
Now to finish it, we're gonna add some UV over the eyes and everything, and build the head a small bit. So a trick when using flat eyes, and I learned this the hard way, because I used to like, when I used the 3D eyes, you can easily put UV from the top, and then dry it, and then on the bottom, then the eyes. It doesn't make a difference then. But with flat eyes, I find, once you put UV on the top, because the flat eyes are so thin, it's gonna actually push the flat eyes and they're gonna close on you kind of like this, like a, like a U. So they, it ruins the eyes. And so what I normally do, I always like start them first by putting UV on the eyes and this will secure the eye. So it won't turn on you. It won't close up on you and then build the head. So let's put some UV on the, on the eye first. And this will actually protect them from going in that U shape. As, as I call it, because it looks like a U then. And then you'll be annoyed. So, <laughs> yeah, so let's put this there. So you see now that won't go anywhere. So it stays nice, nice and flat. Since it's a flat eye, we want it to be flat. Do the next side. And now you see they're nice and straight. So now we can just finish up the fly by doing this. A small drop on the head. You don't need to put too much on the head because I don't want it to be diving. I want it to go from side to side. Now. So a small drop just in the front to hold the eyes in place. And a bit over the track. Take your time building your heads and you'll see it'll come out nice. And then you go underneath, hold your fibers back a bit. And then small bit of leafy drop in between. Right. So once you have that UV there. Let the fiber grow a small bit so they don't push too much back and push them a small bit to the front. And you'll have that nice finish then on it. If you hold them to the back, many times if the UV run, what happens? Your fibers are gonna just be flat underneath then and you don't have that profile then. Okay. Once you're happy with that, Small little drop over the treads there, and we're done. Let's go over your treads a bit. Spin to see it even. There you have it. Just have a quick look if you're happy with everything. Just check a moment, you see any. Triangle with those fibers there, just give a quick cut there. I know it's not going to the museum, but I like it to look nice in my fly box as well. So you can see it has that nice small fiber here. Now You can see it has that nice taper now. That's that nice 
teardrop shape. And those UV colors from the laboratory comes through very nice. And the UV, um, those floral fibers, I really like that in my flies. Hope you enjoy that guys, and until next time.